This is the Quadrilaterals and Polygons tutorial. Let's begin by showing some examples of quadrilaterals and polygons. Here's a couple really common examples. The first looks just like a square, and it is a square because a square is a type of quadrilateral. The middle figure is a pentagon. It's a five-sided figure which falls under the classification of a polygon. Poly meaning many, gon meaning side. And the last figure is your typical star, which is also a polygon. Now, polygons can be classified in a couple different ways. The first classification we're going to discuss is regular polygons. Regular polygons are both equilateral and equiangular, meaning that they have equal side lengths and all the angles interior on the polygon are equal. So, the first two figures are examples of regular polygons. This guy on the left, the square, is a typical polygon. It's got equilateral sides and equiangular sides. The second polygon, the pentagon there, is also a regular polygon. All the side lengths are congruent the same length, and all the interior angles are also going to be congruent to each other the same length. However, the last figure, the star, is not going to be a regular polygon. You can see that each of these side lengths here appears to be a different length, and the angles are definitely going to be different. This angle is going to be very different than this angle, or even than this angle here. So that would be an irregular polygon. You can also classify polygons by whether or not they're convex or concave. A convex polygon is any polygon that does not have a diagonal that contains points exterior to the polygon. So what does that mean exactly? Well, a diagonal in any polygon is connecting one vertice to another vertice that it's not adjacent to. For example, in the square, if I took the vertice on the bottom left corner, this vertex here, and I connected it to another vertex that wasn't adjacent to it, it would have to be this vertex directly across, because the one above it is adjacent to it, and the one to the right of the original vertex is adjacent to that. Another diagonal that you could draw would be right here. Those diagonals do not contain points exterior to the polygon. Any point along those li lines is going to be interior to the polygon. The same with our pentagon here you could connect a bunch of different diagonals inside the pentagon. Here's two, here's two more, here's another two, and you can tell that with these diagonals that I'm drawing, all the points on those lines are interior to the polygon. Now, what happens when I try that on a different figure, like this star here? I'll show you by connecting two non-adjacent vertices. I'll start with this bottom left vertice, and I'll connect it directly across to this vertice. You can tell they're not adjacent because there's a vertice in between them. Yet, when I drew the diagonal connecting those two points, I have a bunch of points that are outside the polygon. That means that this is not a convex polygon. What it is, however, is a concave polygon. It's a polygon that does have a diagonal that contains points exterior to the polygon. So the star is a good example of a concave polygon, whereas the pentagon and the square are both convex polygons. Now, there's something that you should know about the interior angles of any polygon. The interior angles of any polygon will always add up to 180 times two less than the number of sides of the polygon. So I've gone ahead and put that into a mathematical equation for you, where n is the number of sides to the polygon. And the sum of this is the sum of the interior angles. So let's try this. Let's begin with the square. We know that the square has four sides. So in terms of a square, we have n is equal to four. Now. We can plug that into our equation, n, which is 4, minus 2, times 180, is equal to the sum of the interior angles. I'll simplify, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 times 180 is 360. 
And you know that's true, because in a square we have four right angles, each one being 90 degrees. And 90 times 4 is 360. You can do the same thing for the pentagon. A pentagon has five sides, so the number of sides n is equal to 5. So we could just plug that into our equation. 5 minus 2 is 3, so we'd have 3 times 180, which is 540. So, all the interior angles of a pentagon add up to be 540 degrees. Since we know that this is a regular pentagon, if you wanted to solve for the value of any one of those interior angles, we would just divide the total number of degrees that they all add up to by the number of angles that there are, 5. And you'd get that each of those individual angles is 108 degrees. All right, now that we know about interior angles, let's discuss exterior angles of any polygon. Exterior angles will always add up to 360 degrees. Let me show you what an exterior angle is. If you were to just keep drawing the line that makes up a side of a polygon, like for example, the left side of that square that goes up and down, I'm gonna keep drawing in this direction. Now, I'll do the same thing for the top. I'll go to the right in this direction, and we can come down this side, and we can come over here. I went in a clockwise fashion. I just picked any one point and started there. And so the exterior angle is right here that we're referring to. It's right on the inside of these angles. So all those exterior angles, in this case there are four for the square, will always add up to 360 degrees. And with the square, because they come directly out of square sides, they're going to each be 90 degrees, which you know 90 times 4 is 360, so that works. With a pentagon, we would do the same thing. I'll start with the top vertice, and I'll keep extending the top left line out in this direction. I'll do the same for this line. I'll keep it going out here, and then this line here and the bottom line, bottom side here of the pentagon, and then this side of the pentagon. And now I'll go inside clockwise, so each of these angles now we're referring to on the pentagon, the sum of each of those angles is going to be 360 degrees. So we know there are five angles, and the total of those angles added up is 360 degrees. So if you divided 360 by 5, you'd find that each one of those angles is exactly 72 degrees. You can do that for the exterior angles of any regular polygon. Now the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is how to name polygons. You already know how to name some common polygons. For example, and we'll go in order of the number of sides that they have. A triangle is a polygon that has three sides. A quadrilateral is a polygon that has four. Pentagon, five sides. Hexagon, six sides. Heptagon, seven sides, octagon, eight, nonagon, nine sides, and decagon, ten sides. And this nomenclature, a way of naming polygons up to a zillion sides, it doesn't matter. But you're typically going to deal with polygons that have three to ten sides. Now, there's nothing with less than three sides, because less than three sides doesn't make a solid two-dimensional figure. It just makes a line, right? And one side is just a point. So, go ahead and name these three figures off on the right-hand side. Well, we know that this is a triangle, and this is a quadrilateral, and this last figure is a pentagon. Octagons you see all the time, those are stop signs. The rest of the figures are a little bit less common in our everyday life, but you're going to see some and the rest of the videos that follow. So that's what you should really know about quadrilaterals and polygons.